Hello, everyone. I'm Xinlei Yang from Tsinghua University. Today, I will be talking about our work on building a fast and light bandwidth testing system for internet users. This is the outline of my presentation, and I will first introduce the background. Nowadays, bandwidth testing services have been widely used in many fields. For example, bandwidth testing is the core component of many network applications. In addition, the result of some BTSs have been cited in the government reports and trade press for reporting and advertising. Internet users often use these bandwidth testing tools for benchmarking SP services. In fact, one of the most popular bandwidth testing services called SpeedTest has conducted over 34 billion bandwidth tests to date. Recently, as VNOs and wireless access becoming more and more popular, the network is becoming more dynamic and less transparent. What's more, some emerging bandwidth-hungry apps like UHD videos and VRAR require the in-situ access bandwidth of end users. In these cases, bandwidth testing is becoming even more important. However, when we use today's BTSs in practice, we find that they are not satisfactory. For example, we conduct simple bandwidth tests using MMOA 5G network on four popular BTSs. We observe that most of them incur quite a long test duration. Also, they incur excessive data usage. For example, speed testing incurs about 2 GB of data usage for a single bandwidth test. Most of the BTSs also bear low accuracy. Therefore, we would like to figure out whether bandwidth testing can be fast, light, and accurate simultaneously. To answer this question, we first study on the state of the art. Our research objects include popular bandwidth testing websites, commercial bandwidth testing apps, and important bandwidth testing APIs in Android. We use three PCs and four smartphones to conduct small-scale investigation. In detail, we record and analyze the network traces of different BTSs. Also, if the sources are available, we conduct code-level reverse engineering. After that, we use more than 100 globally distributed virtual machines from six mainstream cloud service providers for large-scale benchmarking tests. With the above efforts, we successfully understand the test logic of more than 20 BTSs. The most representative ones are listed here. We find that today's bandwidth tests usually contain three processes. First, during the setup process, the client chooses one or more servers with the lowest latencies. Then, the client conducts bandwidth probing with these test servers. Finally, it estimates the overall bandwidth. In fact, the result of an ideal bandwidth testing process should obey the graph on the left. However, due to the noises generated from congestion control and link sharing, the actual bandwidth testing graphs usually look like the one on the right. In order to get rid of the impact of noises, today's BTSs usually combine noises from space and time dimension. For instance, SpeedTest deploys over 11,000 test servers around the world. By doing so, it uses large-scale test server deployments to ensure high-quality network connections, thus largely reducing noises. In contrast, FAST combats noises in another way. It uses long test duration to wait for the coming of sufficient desired samples. To sum up, most of today's BTSs use excessive temporal spatial redundancies for combating noises. However, these solutions can lead to large-scale network deployments, long test duration, and excessive data usage. Therefore, we intend to think about it in another way. Can we accommodate and exploit the noises rather than suppress the impact of them? To answer this question, we first try to reconsider BTS through a statistic framework called rejection sampling. The pipeline of rejection sampling is quite simple. Given a target distribution Tx, we want to select desired samples that obey Tx from the input samples that subjected to the proposal distribution Px. We use acceptance rejection function, or ARF for short, to accept the desired samples and reject the others. 
We try to model the bandwidth testing process with rejection sampling. Given a group of throughput samples, ARF is used to select desired samples for bandwidth estimation. However, a challenge will face is that, in bandwidth testing process, the target distribution, Tx, is unknown beforehand. Therefore, traditional rejection sampling cannot be directly applied in this scenario. We name this problem fuzzy rejection sampling. Despite the fact that the target distribution is unknown, we have a key finding based on our large-scale measurement. While noise samples are scattered across a wide throughput interval, desired samples tend to concentrate within a narrow interval. Thus, given a group of samples, we search for a throughput interval which is as dense as possible and contains as many samples as possible. This interval is called crucial interval, which acts as the ARF of fuzzy rejection sampling. We discover that the crucial intervals converge quickly during the testing process. Guided by this, we stop the bandwidth testing once the crucial intervals converge. It is worth noting that the accepted samples can intensify the crucial intervals by making them denser, and the rejected samples can also help better contrast the crucial intervals, thus accelerating the convergence of them. Therefore, both accepted and rejected samples are used to make bandwidth tests fast and light. In practice, we need fast calculation of the real-time crucial interval. Therefore, we propose the convex hole acceleration that reduces the complexity from on square to on log n. When putting the crucial interval sampling into actual use, we find that crucial interval may sometimes be ineffective. Therefore, we learn from BBR, an emergent congestion control mechanism with a built-in bandwidth probing scheme. We leverage and improve BBR to realize elastic bandwidth probing, which makes crucial interval almost always effective. This is the architecture of FastBTS, which realizes fuzzy rejection sampling with crucial interval sampling and elastic bandwidth probing. However, in some cases like 5G network, Using only one test server cannot saturate users' access link bandwidth. Therefore, we propose data-driven server selection and adaptive multi-homing to handle these cases. Most of today's BTSs choose servers with the lowest latencies to the client. However, we discover that low latency does not necessarily indicate high throughput. Therefore, we devise a data-driven server selection that selects the test servers with the highest bandwidth estimation based on their historical performance. Adaptive multi-homing is used for adjusting concurrency level when current servers cannot saturate the access link bandwidth of end hosts. Instead of using fixed threshold, we adaptively add concurrency level if the newly added server can increase the aggregate throughput. We conduct comprehensive benchmarking experiments under diverse network scenarios, including local area network, residential broadband, data center network, LTE network, 5G network, and high-speed rail cellular network. Based on our evaluation, fast BTS achieves 5 to 72 percent higher average accuracy, 2.3 to 8.5 times shorter test duration and 3.7 to 14.2 less data usage. Moreover, fast BTS with only 30 test servers achieves comparable accuracy compared with the production system of speedtest.net with about 12,000 test servers, while incurring 5.6 times shorter test duration and 10.7 times less data usage on average. Here comes the system demo part. We first conduct bandwidth tests on personal computer using speed test and fast with 100 megabyte per second wireless network. Fast BTS only uses 3.1 second and 37 megabyte data to obtain an accurate result, while speed test uses 15 seconds and 176 megabyte data for the test. We next conduct bandwidth tests on the 5G network. Again, fast BTS outperforms speed test by using only 4.1 second test duration and 168 megabytes data. In contrast, speed test uses 15 seconds 
and about 1 GB data for a single bandwidth test. To sum up, we conduct a thorough study on today's popular commercial bandwidth testing services. Based on in-depth investigation and large-scale benchmarking, we reveal how these BTSs actually work as well as their pros and cons. We present FastBTS, a novel bandwidth testing solution that accommodates and exploits noises to make bandwidth tests fast and light. With only 30 test servers, FastBTS achieves comparable accuracy compared with Btest.net with about 12,000 servers, while incurring 5.6 times shorter test duration and 10.7 times less data usage on average. We have released all the source code and an online demo system as well for community to better understand FastBTS. That's all. Thanks for listening, and now ready for your questions.